This guy's name is Goalie. Bryce Goalie. Are you kidding me? And he's, and he's a goalie? <laughs> Bryce Goalie. Unbelievable. You have the Oreo Man and the Milk Man. A match made in heaven. Things you love to see. What is going on everybody and welcome back to your Quebec Nordiques franchise mode where we are not Stanley Cup champions. I was so certain we were going to go back to back. I was so certain this was going to be the year. But unfortunately we got hit with the injury bug. That is a damn brutal bug to get and the New York Rangers went on to become the eventual Stanley Cup champions. They ended up facing the team that beat out Edmonton and Calgary, swept them both. And then they obviously went on to beat the Dallas Stars in seven games and then lost to the Rangers in the Stanley Cup final. We lost out to the Ottawa Senators and then they lost out to the eventual Rangers. We lost in seven games. When you lose your leading scorer, and when your leading scorer is literally the backbone of your team, things don't really go as planned. It's pretty evident that we are not the same team without Conrad Stastny. He is a beast, he is a monster, he's our captain, he's a big time player making big boy money for us. Six foot five, 235 pounds of him. We got a comment here from New York Junior 69ers EASHL 20. Okay, he says, can you show how many points Conrad has in his career? He has 690 points in 574 games, coming off a 121 point campaign. Absolute legend. But it's not a complete loss. Uncle in the comments, everyone's favorite uncle, he says, it's not a complete loss. Your young guns and AHL depth chart got some good NHL playoff experience. Bad luck getting hit with the injury bug. That's just it. We know we got to call up quite a few players, so it's not all bad. They got a bit of a taste of what the NHL is looking like. Ryan Suzuki came up after riding the pine. But there is some things I want to look forward to going into this draft and what is going to be a very easy resign stage. So to Depending on what happens here, we might get a decent chunk of simulation done because we're basically poised to go on another run. As you can see here, I went over this in the last video, we don't have a lot to do in the resign stage. The Rhino is still on an entry level deal, which is nice. That's kind of buying us that extra year. We basically did the exact same thing with the Milkman. Now there's a lot of talk that Nick Suzuki is going to drop. He's going to do like what Ryan Paling did with our Seattle Storm Bears, and I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, Ryan Suzuki is a second line forward, 87 overall, had a fantastic year, almost 80 points. He had 79. I remember that. What a beast. So I'm interested to see if he's going to drop. I don't think he's going to, but as you can see, everyone is under contract. Spike Helm is a guy we have to re-sign, which is not going to be a huge deal. Troy Stetcher might not be back for Tannen. That playoff run kind of solidified his job. He had 23 points last year and eight in the postseason with six goals, five of them being huge so there's still some tweaks to make but we don't really have a lot to do regarding our re-sign we got Tristan Jari we got Yaroslav Askarov we are good to go but I think Alex he has the right idea time to draft another goalie that's right we've been blessed we've been spoiled with a bunch of really good goaltending and in the system we don't really have a whole lot we have uh, Declan McLean who's 23 75 I mean to be honest with you he's probably Probably not going to be anything and then aside from that we don't really have a whole lot down the depth chart so I think it is time to draft a goalie maybe not with our first I mean maybe if there's a goaltender out there but I don't know if we're going to waste a first on a goalie because uh, Askarov should be the guy for the foreseeable future. Now before we hop into the draft, I just want to say thank you guys for all the continued support. It's seriously been awesome. We're, what, 30 episodes in and we're still pumping well over 6,000 views per episode, which is awesome. I know obviously the further the series goes on, the less people get interested. Obviously I know that, I've been doing this for a long time, but we're kind of at the point now, 30 episodes in, we've got our Stanley Cup, you know, now everything is just gravy. My plan for a franchise mode is take a team and make them to be the best that they can 
can be. We're President's Trophy winners. I'm not saying we're going to end this thing, but I'm saying, you know, we're on the back nine here. We're on the back nine. So, so it's time to get the creative juices flowing once again. What should we do for our next franchise mode? Now, go as crazy as you want, go as, as vanilla as you want, or go as crazy as you want. Doesn't really matter to me, but I'm wanting to do something a little bit crazy and I'm gonna have to start working on it basically right now if I want to complete it by the time this is over. I'm just gonna give you a little teaser and you guys can let me know if you uh, if you think it's a good idea or not. We basically strip every single team from the NHL from 1 to 31. Get them out of here. All gone. That means every single player is going to be gone. No McDavid. No Matthews. No Ty Ronning. I know. It's hard to believe. No Artemi Panarin. You get the point. Everyone's gone. We bring in 31 created teams. I know it's a lot. And then in those created teams, I just fill them up with random players from the SHL, the Sim Liga, you know, a bunch of random random guys who are like 60 overall. It's going to take three or four, maybe even five years for the NHL to be competitive. So that's going to make the drafts really important. I think it'd be really cool and I haven't seen it done before. So like I said, take everyone out, take every single player out, take every team out. Maybe we, we throw the Storm Bears in there. We throw the Stags in there. You know, we throw in a bunch of random teams and we just build a new NHL. I think that'd be really, really cool. That's my plan and I'm thinking of doing that for the next franchise mode. But we still got lots of work to do here in Quebec, so let's start off the NHL entry draft. So in the last video, the Canucks got the first overall pick. Uh, let's have a look here at the draft class. Let's see what's out there for goalies, which is definitely something I want to have a look at. But Jim Martin, he's looking like to be the consensus number one. We kind of went through this last episode. Joel Madden, George Bachman, uh, Steve Weinman. So yeah, we've kind of already looked at all of these guys. Kobayashi, what a name. The first defenseman available. We got Sakic. We got Doughty. All right, some former names out there. Ilyash. We got Briere. That's kind of cool. Now, the first goalie available, where is he? Let's have a look here. The best goaltender available. The best goalie available is at 49, Krill Habibulin. Oh, my God, what a name. I think we might have to go get this guy. Uh, or the next one's going to be Reese Trigger, or there's Kali Zetterberg. There's some great names out there. High fringe starter. We might be able to snag him with our second. Looks like he played in the KHL or the MHL last year. His strength of competition was plus... His strength in competition was A+, and he didn't put up, you know, insane numbers, but for an 18-year-old playing in a professional Russian league, 11, 8, and 2 ain't bad, but those three shutouts are really nice. I think Krill Habibulin should be the guy we take with our second round pick, but let's go here. Let's see what the top five is going to be looking like. Oh my god, they get an 83 overall medium elite Martin, Jim Martin, and then Joel Madden, 81, so the Arizona Coyotes get a lot of help. Bachman, 80 overall medium elite the Islanders god they need some help they pick Wyman and he's 79 overall medium elite I was gonna say if Buffalo was to pick like an 85 overall high franchise he was a slip in the draft of course that's just the New York Islanders luck god they're bad and then Montreal gets Kobayashi 68 medium top four not a great pick and it looks like after the top five it really really drops off there so Doughty and Benoit so Benoit looks like to be the best of the group there. Uh, where's Sakic? Ilyash, that's even better than the Montreal pick. And Sakic, a medium elite, goes to Vancouver. Things you'll love to see. All right, 28th overall, not the Stanley Cup champions. We have the first pick in the second round, and then we have, obviously, our pick... We might play it safe at 18 in the second round. We have two seconds, but let's see here. Who are we going to pick? Anti Barkov or, oh my God, Timothy? Timofi? How the hell do you pronounce that name? Kind of sounds like you have like a speech impediment. Hello, my name is Timothy. Uh, <laughs> Timothy, I love that name. Timothy Breeland, who is a defensive defenseman, 6'4", 214. I really like this guy, especially his name. Hello, my name is Timothy. Uh, or Antti Barkov, who's a 17-year-old. Uh, looks like he's a Finnish center, which I like. 
I might go with the center here in uh, Anti Barkov. I can already see people hating on me for not taking Mr. Timothy, uh, but I'm gonna go with Anti Barkov here with our first picking a fin, something we haven't done. But but with the addition of the Rhino, we got to get some more fins here, and he's 63 medium top nine. All right, what is Mr. Timothy looking like? He's 62 medium top six, so I think we made the right choice there. I'll take the center over the defenseman. Jacobson, 59th overall. Yeah, we definitely made the right choice. There you go. So with this pick, if we pick our goalie, we're going to pick him like 30 spots too early because he's scouted to go like way down here. Actually, it's not that far. I have a feeling he's going to be taken, but there's actually some other players out here. Mika Hulinas, who's a medium top six confirmed, or we got ourselves a gem, a five foot nine medium top six confirmed 17 year old. He could be medium elite. He could be really, really good. So I agree with you. Taking the goalie is probably the smart choice here, but I'm going to risk it. I might make a trade. I might trade up, but I can't pass pass up on a gem especially if he's medium top six another center let's go ahead and select him here with the first pick in the second round okay it's not as good as i thought medium top six now i'm wondering if that goal is going to be available we're going to pick at 51, so I don't know about that. Let me see if I can move up here, see if I can trade with Vancouver, and I'll go ahead and select a goalie. What am I going to have to move up? What am I going to have to pay to move up just a few spots? To move up 11 spots in the draft, trade rejected. Okay, I mean, in real life, that might go through, but they probably have their eye on a on a decent player here. I'll give you a seventh as well. Two additional players in this draft to move up 11 spots. Trade rejected, are you serious? Okay. Just going to throw in a couple of nothing prospects here. These guys are both like 25 years old, so they're going nowhere fast. Get them off the books anyways. That should make it go through. Trade rejected. Wow, okay, they don't want to give up their pick. That's fine. I'll find a team that actually wants to trade their pick, um, even if it's like Vegas. Let's go to Vegas. I can make this work. Give me a second. All right, what if I offer this to the New Jersey Devils? They want to get rid of their pick. 46 overall. There you go. Done deal. Thank you very much. He should be available there our goalie should be available at 46 and he is okay great there you go so nothing crazy here at the start of the second round but let's make our pick the guy that we wanted krill habby bulin what a name there you go welcome to quebec straight out of russia 61 201 let's see what he's looking like i made a big deal out of this guy and he's 70 overall high fringe that's interesting i wonder how quick this guy's gonna grow at high fringe i've never had a high fringe goalie i think he should get starting minutes in the ahl this year i mean depending if he comes over that early or not but we got a goalie we got two centers what else do we need here might be able to pick a defenseman oh my god falls right into our lap the seal Raphael seal a medium elite defenseman don't even have to think twice thank you very much and he's 50 overall medium elite at any at best, that guy's a trading chip. He's going to have a ton of trade value. So there you go. Got a defenseman, couple of centers. Do we go with a forward here? We can go with Hudson Wang. It's a goalie, uh, Mr. Wang. All right. Oh, my God. This guy's name is Goalie. Bryce Goalie. Are you kidding me? And he's, and he's a goalie? <laughs> Bryce Goalie. Unbelievable. We have to pick this guy. All right, Bryce Goalie. There you are. The goalie of the future. And he's medium elite. Holy shit. 47 overall. Things you love to see. The goalie. Who's a goalie? Bryce Goalie. Unbelievable. I think this is the best name of all time. 47 overall. I mean, I don't know if he's going to be anything, but goddamn, Bryce Goalie. All right, 188th overall, we got, uh, what do we got? A medium top nine, 20 years old, another Russian center? Sure, why not? I love drafting 20-year-olds, you guys know that. Could be decent overall, 59, that guy's going nowhere fast. And then with our last pick, this should be our last pick, yeah, there you go. This is going to be our seventh rounder, and what are we going to do with it? Uh, medium bottom six, any more 20-year-olds hanging out here? Eh, why not take a chance? 
on Wes Cassian, a 6-3 goalie who had seven shutouts this year. Why the hell not? Take a chance. We're picking goalies. Medium fringe starter in the seventh round. I am not going to be too upset about that. Easy draft. We actually got exactly what I wanted. Uh, we picked three centers, which was kind of crazy, but we got a couple of goalies, especially Bryce Goalie. What a name. I mean, at best, those guys with... Uh, I actually have to re-sign TJ Oshie here, but at best, those guys are going to be just straight up trading chips, which is totally fine. Let's actually just have a quick little check-in here on Mr. Nathan Tucker. He's got a record of 237, 145, and 28. He's got a point percentage of 61.2%, one Stanley Cup, two President's Trophy, no Jack Adams, unbelievable. 70% on the team fit, which is nice. Uh, how's he looking like with, uh, where is he? Where is he? It's not even up there. Where's Stastny? It doesn't even register for some reason. Stastny's not even on here. Maybe because he's hurt still? Uh, I feel like he should be on there. Okay, I know that was kind of an issue where he wasn't a fan of Conrad, but... All right, Tristan Jari is good to go. We got our backup goalie. Everyone seems to be happy. Let's get this super easy re-sign stage done. We have 9 million bucks to work with, so it's going to be relatively easy. Let's go. Okay, literally the easiest re-sign stage of all time. That took... 45 seconds. I had to tender qualify a bunch of people and then sign Spike Helm. Uh, okay, so TJ Oshie is not available. He wants to be a head coach, and I offered him the assistant coach because we already have a head coach. You know what, TJ Oshie? Go be a head coach elsewhere. You yeah. want a Stanley Cup here. You deserve to go be a head coach. You have all the tools necessary, so good luck, TJ Oshie. We got to go ahead and find ourselves an assistant coach. So Jake Vertanen said no, that's interesting. Okay, even though I gave him exactly what I wanted, Spike Helm was cheap, and then all these guys are just nothing players. I, I had to give a qualifying offer to a whole bunch of people, but I actually want to sign Jake Vertanen, so I'm gonna give him a little bit more money. We have $6.8 million, so let me see what I can do. Uh, I'll give him like, whatever, 1.8 or 1.9. You know what, he played really well in the postseason. 1.9 million, he's a good fourth liner. There you go. All right, Jake Vertanen really doesn't want to be here. I'm going to offer him two million bucks to come hang out on the fourth line. He's got a Stanley Cup. He was great in the postseason. I think he's, you know, he's earned that, but anything more than two million bucks. Come on, buddy. All right, you should sign. Come on, two million bucks. That's a lot of money. There you go. He said, you made my decision so easy. Really? A hundred extra grand is really going to do it? I guess that's a lot of money. All right, so all these guys are good to go. Just a bunch of players down for our American Hockey League team. So let me have a look here and see if there is anyone that we need to go after in the free agency period. Now, before I look at free agency, before I see there's going to be a franchise player in there and get my hopes up, let me go ahead and write out the team like I usually do. We're also going to hire an assistant coach. Let me go ahead and see what we need. If there's any holes, I can't see there being one. We ended up getting rid of Troy Stetcher, so there might be another third pairing defenseman that we have to just bring in. But aside from that, we should be pretty much good to go. All right, so the only thing we're missing here is going to be potentially a third line winger. And we just have way too many players that are good enough to play in the NHL, but I don't have the room for them. We got Lockhart, Co, the Rollo Man. Suzuki, Hoivinen. Unfortunately, I don't think Hoivinen's good enough to be on the third line left wing. Sorry, the third line right wing. You can see he's only 80 overall, so that's a bit concerning. Like Lockhart, Co, the Rollo Man, Iserman, Stringer. There's all these guys that are just almost good enough. They're almost ready to go, listed as other forwards or depth forwards. I really like this Keith Iserman kid, though. I think maybe giving him the chance on the fourth line. It's going to be like four or five guys kind of fighting it out for that spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to freak out, but I want to wait until the end of the off season to see if anyone takes that extra step. Sometimes it can grow into like 82, 83 overall over the off season, maybe even 81, but we definitely need to get another defenseman since we let Troy Stetcher walk. And maybe that means moving a guy like Hampus Lindholm, but holy free agents. Okay. Hey, Eric Carlson, how's it going chief? Okay, Eric Carlson, Doughty, Kane, oh boy, there's a lot out there. An 82 overall wants $6.4 million, what a time. We live in a world where Vinny Henestrosa wants more money than Pierre-Luc Dubois. What 
the hell. Me and you want more money than PLD. You must have had some sort of a crazy career year. 70 points, you're 32, and you want 8.9 million? I'd rather spend $8 million and get Seth Jones. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh my god. So obviously we're a cap team, so we need to go to the affordable section, because we don't be able to afford everyone here. A couple of former New York Rangers, also a couple of former Quebec Nordiques. Uh, let's have a look at the defenseman here. Obviously we got rid of a guy like Troy Stetcher, and there he is. He's 80 overall. Um, I mean, we could bring him back, 2.6 million. We could bring back Zadorov as well, but again, that kind of has the same issue where Oreo and Zadorov are the same player type, so that's probably not going to work. I definitely want a top six. I don't want to overpay someone. Uh, Neil Pionk might not be bad. He's an offensive defenseman. Five goals, 20 helpers. I don't mind Neil Pionk. He could play with a defensive guy. We can, might go after Mr. Neil Pionk here, who's went around the league a little bit. He was quickly traded to Nashville, but then went right back to Winnipeg. Uh, Neil Pionk, 30 years old, might not be a bad option. Uh, Eric Gustafson, Jake Gardner, Ethan Bear. There's a few options out there. You know, $2.7 million for an 81, that doesn't seem that bad. Or Brett Pesci, but he's a defensive defenseman. Let's go with Neil Pionk. Yeah, why not? $2.7 bucks. yeah, it's a lot for a bottom pairing defenseman, but we'll give you $3 million for one year. How does that sound? We don't need to spend the money elsewhere, so that seems all good to me. That's basically the only player that I want right now. Uh, I don't really need anyone else. If there's any young studs out there, like the Stromberg guy, I guess I'll give a contract to, why not? Low elite, I mean, I guess I'll throw something at him, but uh, aside from that, I think we're basically good to go. I gotta go ahead and hire an assistant coach because TJ Yoshi is looking to be a head coach elsewhere, so that's gonna be easy enough. We got Neil Pionk, I think we might be okay. So looking at some options here, there's a few players, and yes, I saw Wayne Train Simmons there. There was one guy in particular who was 70 overall in the team fit. Now, he seems to be up with a lot of players and down with a lot of players. You can see he loves a guy like Nick Suzuki. However, the Rhino, not so much. Big on Lucas Raymond, not so much Kale McCarr. He's an offensive coach that makes sense. Now, his 70 overall team fits great, but why not go with a guy 67 who's kind of middle of the road with everyone? He's a balanced coach, which I like, and I'm a big fan of bringing ex-NHLers on. So Wayne Train Simmons, what do you say? We'll give you whatever you want. It's basically just a blank check at this point. Point. You want a million bucks? There you go. We'll give you a million shekels, one million loonies here in Quebec. Go ahead and sign on the dotted line. An extra 500 bucks just because. Offer, offer coach. There you go. That should be our, that should be our associate coach. All good to go. And let's get to the start of the regular season. I am hearing your staff chemistry is low. I was gonna say in quotations. No, <laughs> that's weird, uh, but I want to be the solution to the issue. I accept. Okay, Wayne Train. Um, okay, I didn't think it was an issue. Uh, Braden Shen, no thank you. I thought our coaching chemistry was pretty good. Uh, Neil Pionk, he's, he's good to go. Three million bucks, hell yeah. All right, welcome to Quebec, baby. But wasn't our coaching staff, like, wasn't that pretty good? 82 staff chemistry, like, we're pretty good. I don't know what you're talking about, man. So going back to the next franchise mode idea that I had, it's going to take a lot of work and I'm obviously going to have to start working on it like right now. Uh, as for this trade, goalie for Shen? Absolutely not. I mean, it would take a lot of work. I have to make 32 created teams. I have to, I got to do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Jordan Cairo goes to Columbus for a couple of seconds, okay. But I think it'd be cool because the NHL would be just all fresh. It would be all brand new. Philip, don't know. Absolutely not. Because don't get me wrong. I love the NHL. I love McDavid. I love all the young talent. I love Philip Dano. Love that guy. But I think it'd be really cool to see maybe something change. Maybe just a new something that no one's ever done before. Obviously you guys know I'm a big fan of getting pretty creative with our franchise modes. So I'm thinking like a fresh slate. Again, it would be really cool if you guys could help me out with this uh, regarding roster sharing. But since the game does not allow roster sharing, unfortunately we won't be able to do that, which is really dumb. But Bowen Byram, I remember looking at this guy, he was like 74 overall. Yeah, he's really, really low and he's making 4.9. So probably just really pissed off to be honest with 
with you in Colorado. We also can get Granlin. That's a lot of cap. I don't want to take that on. We just signed Neil Pionk. They'd have to eat half his cap and some, and I don't think they're going to do that. But like I said, if there was roster sharing, I could just, you know, hire even a couple of you guys just to go in and make a bunch of teams. But unfortunately, roster sharing is not a thing, so I'm going to have to get to work. If you guys want to see that or if you have any ideas, any other tweaks, by all means, please let me know. I don't think we need to change much here. Assistant captains, Nasty Nas and Barzell. Obviously, Conrad with the C. That's all good to go. Let's have a look at the lines. Can I get a plus five? It doesn't look like it, but still the plus threes. I love that. Uh, everything looks to be good. Um, let me just change a couple things up here, and then we should be good to go. After Stuart Roloff's had six points in nine games as a rookie, never played an NHL game before, had two goals in his NHL debut in the playoffs might I add three power play points six points in nine games like I just mentioned he now has won the spot for the fourth line right winger I took out Ko now he's a fan favorite don't get me wrong I do like that guy but I think Stuart Rolos could be something special former second round pick for us I mean maybe he just needs a chance look at that slap shot by the way 93 92 wrist shot power guy's got a cannon he can't aim it for shit but Look at his physical category as well. That's why it's kind of make it or break it. 23 years old, he has all the skills to do it. Maybe it's like Kaliev, he just needs a chance. Now, look at Hoivinen. He did grow to 82 just like I wanted, so that's awesome. Uh, Quinn Wrights is right there. He has 87 faceoffs, and Hoivinen has 84, so both can easily take the draws. The Milkman, Suzuki, and Kaliev. Now, I saw some people want me to do this. Unfortunately, it doesn't give it a plus three. I'd have to take Con Conrad off that line, which I really don't want to do, but I mean Suzuki and the Milkman, they played amazing last year together, so we're not going to touch that. Nasty Nas and Kale McCarr, I couldn't put the, I can put the Rhino there as well, but being 19 years old, I don't want to overload him quite yet. He's still a very, very young kid. The Rhino, he looks unbelievable. He's going to be so damn good, but we're going to play him with Hampus Lindholm. We got the Oreo and we got Neil Pionk and then between the pipes, Yaroslav Askarov and Tristan Jari. All right, we got Habi Bulin down there in the American Hockey League. He's over from Russia. Everything's good to go with our AHL team. Iserman, I really wanted to give him the... I really wanted to give this kid the chance, another former second round pick, but we just have too many damn players, unfortunately. So let's go here, let's get the year started. But before we do that, I wanna have a quick check in here on my boys over in Long Island. So it still doesn't look great, it still doesn't look that good at all, but looks like the guy that they just drafted fourth overall has made the NHL straight out of camp, Steve Wyman, all right, number 70. Uh, have a look at their defense here, still Morgan Riley. He looks like they re-upped with him. 11.3 could have been a Quebec Nordique, but there he is. Ty Smith, Dougie Hamilton. Now the big question is the goaltenders. How good, or I guess how bad, is Tucker Tynan? I'm going to say he bounced back. I believe in him. Oh no, he's still 78 overall. Oh man, I'm so sorry, Tucker Tynan. I'm so damn sorry. And then Anton Forsberg. Now the thing is, they're the same overall, so they're going to get split. They're going to get split starts, which is just so unfortunate for Tucker Tynan things you hate to see. Now we're getting a lot of offers here for Bowen Byram. Now a part of me maybe wants to take a chance and maybe Bowen Byram is going to be 80, 84, 85 overall. He's 74 so I don't think he's going to be that great and he really hasn't been anything super special in the NHL unfortunately. So a part of me, you know, the risk taker in me wants to maybe make them do something like this. Maybe he's going to want to make them eat half his cap which is a lot don't get me wrong which is going to be like over two and a half million there it is so we're going to get him for 2.9 million and we're going to trade him Hampus Lindholm now I know what you're saying I know trust me it's scary it's scary uh, Hampus Lindholm is 86 overall he's 32 he's making more money so that'd be a big cap saving thing plus we can probably get a pick now what do you guys think Bowen Byram's overall is is it 80, 82? I mean, it's so damn low at 74. I don't think it's really worth the risk, to be honest with you. 
I'm just thinking because we do have that second line where our um, our defense is a zero on the chemistry. I'd love to get it to a plus two. I don't know if Bowen Byram is really going to be the option, to be honest with you. So we're going to probably say no to that. But let's get the start of the year done. Let's go. All right, so we start off the year a nice little back-to-back -back at home game, Carolina, and then the Anaheim Ducks are in town. And then we go to San Jose. I'm looking to see if there's any rival games early on here. Again, since we're early enough in the episode, we got a game against Ottawa, a game against the Islanders, and a game against the Montreal Canadiens. I think we might be able to go up to at least that game because we really don't have a whole lot to do. We're basically set. We're all good to go. We don't need to make any trades that I know of until I hear your guys' comments. We don't need to do a whole lot, so let's just get a bunch of simulation done. Let's go, period, number one against the Carolina Hurricanes, the season opener, and it's 2-1 for Carolina. Okay, but the Rhino gets it started. Big goal, a little over two minutes in. Martin Natchez, there you go, I know how to pronounce that name now. And then Trent Frederick, he scores. 2-1 lead for Carolina going into the second. All right they get two more Sveshnikov and Drake Kajula all right boys so maybe a little bit of a slow start here maybe a little bit of a long off season you're not quite ready for the season opener that's all we got another game coming right up Hoivenen makes it 4-2 36 shots Quinn Bossy just shut the door Let's get at least a month and a half done, see if we can rebound here against the Ducks, and we win 2-1, there you go. Up against the Sharks, keep the good times going, oof, okay, maybe not, 7-3 loss. Ryan Suzuki, unfortunately, going to be hanging out in the AHL, I'll put you there in a minute. Uh, up against Columbus, a little bit of a shaky start here, 1-3, what's going on, boys? We're not notoriously a slow starting team. So there you go. 3-3-0. Three, three oh, a couple of back-to-back -back wins up against the Panthers. There you go. We're stringing things together here. Things are coming together. 5-2 uh, and then a 5 nothing win. There you go. Never ever fear. The Quebec Nordiques will go ahead and win five straight. Like it's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. See if we can keep it going here up against the two six and one Buffalo Sabres. I didn't see if that was a win or not because it's not updating. Uh, was that a win? Yes, maybe. Hello? Are you going to update? There you go. Yes, it was. That's five, six. That's seven straight against the St. Louis Blues. Looking to make it eight against Connor McDavid and the Oilers. There you go. That's eight. And of course, here we are up against the Ottawa Senators, our arch rival, the team that kicked us out of the postseason last year. We were battered, we were bruised, but we're healthy, we're all ready to go. Let's go up against Chubbs and Bo Alfredson, period number one. And it's four to one, baby. Lucas Raymond, Connor Lockhart, Matty Barzell, and the Milkman. How you doing? Thomas Shabbat scores on Tristan Jari. That's how confident we are. We start our backup against one of the best teams in the NHL. Period number two. Okay, six to one. Conrad and the Milkman once again. Come on, Mahalik. I'd love to see a hat trick here against Ottawa. I know you would love to get it too. There's some bad blood after last year's postseason. 33 to 19 are the shots. We are all over these guys. Looks like we're just shutting it down defensively. 35 22. Yeah, we're all over them here. We had a dominating first and they really couldn't recover after that. Tyler Pitlick gets one on. Jari, but that's another easy win and add that to the win streak. Looking to make it 10 wins in a row to not really start off the year, but in the first month anyways, that's ridiculous. Looking to make it 10 in a row, Michael Ferlin and Sammy Vatten and no up against the up against the reigning Stanley Cup champions. Let's go, the New York Rangers. I know we're slow simming a couple games here, but I wouldn't mind going into OT or a shootout. Spice the video up a little bit. Period number one. And it's one nothing. Schrader on Askarov. Period number two. Okay, two to one. Matty Barzell gets one, but Philip Heidel scores on Askarov. All right, boys, we're out shooting them here, but we can see why they were the Stanley Cup champions last year. Michael Matheson scores. Power play for us. There you go, Spike Helm on the power play. Scores on Philip Gustafson. Another power play. Do I smell another power play goal? Capo Caco. Oh, man. All right. Well, unfortunately, I think... Oh, wait, Quinn writes. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. Emelyn. There's all this blue on the screen. I don't know who's who. Five to three, and it looks like our winning streak is going to be snapped. 
draft unless we can get something crazy in the last second it's not going to happen we lose to the stanley cup champions and our winning streak is now over i really want to slow sim this game against the islanders to be honest with you i feel so bad for tucker tynan we screwed him over so bad i mean i think it was the right choice because askarov obviously is growing which is nice and he's actually per and he's actually been one of the best goalies in the entire league i mean he won the vesna trophy for god's sakes we definitely made the right choice but as you can see here we're just dummying teams seven to two against the canucks and look at the montreal canadians actually they're not too far behind us 24 points so from a basement team in the past few years looks like they're on a hot start here but tucker tynan how's it going buddy former pals matthew barzell back in his old barn let's go period number one i'd say be nice to tynan but once you're on the ice there's no such thing as a friend unless they're on your own team period new oh wait schultz all right he scores on the first shot period number one and it is one one we tie it up the milkman scores on former teammate tucker tynan Oh man, retweet if you cry every time. Period number two. Yeah, here we go. The Milkman and the Nasty Nas shorthanded. A shorthanded goal from Nasty Nas. He tucks one on Tucker Tynan. We're doubling them in the shot department. Just a really good team against a really bad team. And Quinn Wrights adds insult to injury. But Noah Dobson gets one. Oh, Conrad Stastny. He's like, all right, I've had enough of this. It's about to be over here. The Rollo Man makes it six to two. I'm sorry. Conrad again. Yeah, he's pissed off. There you go. He's going off on his former teammate Tucker Tynan. 7-2. to two. I mean, you love to see it, but you also hate to see it. Poor Tucker gets left in for all seven goals. They just don't treat him right in Long Island. Three points for Nasty Nas, a goal and two helpers, four for Stastny, and four for Mahalik. The boys are buzzing. All right, so like I said, I want to go up to this Montreal game. Just reminding you, we have an all-time record of 11-6 and six against the Montreal Canadiens. We've won our last two. After we were on like a seven-game winning streak, we ended up losing one in November of 2025. So we're moving into 2027 here. We're now in the last month of 2026. Six. Uh, so they haven't beat us in what I'm hoping to make it almost a year. So up against our rival, the Montreal Canadiens, where I've outscored them 66 to 55. I want to see at least four goals in this game. Hit the 70 mark. Let's go. Now, Montreal, they're getting better year by year. Obviously, they were terrible for a few years there. So the rebuild is starting to look up. Let's go. Period number one. And it's 2 2. Okay. Hoivenen and Stastny. Oikinen and then Max Lafleur. They score two goals on five shots. We started Tristan Jari. Period number two. Okay, still a 2 2 game. They have almost, they only have 12 shots. So there you go. Neil Pionk. That's what I'm talking about. That could have been his first. He scores a huge one in a huge rivalry game. That's how you win the fans over. But Ricci, he comes right back. Or Recky. And I know I got torched in the comments there. Ricci, Recky, same thing. Uh, 40 to 15 other shots. And Jake Vertanen with six minutes left. He comes through with the go ahead goal. Is that going to be enough? There you go. We put almost 45 shots on poor Braden Holtby. Add another win to the win column. Quebec now has 12 wins and Montreal only has six. All right, so 18, 8, and 0. We have not lost in overtime yet. Uh, along with the Flames and the Canucks and the Blues, we are the only team undefeated in the extra frame. The worst team in the league, just for fun, 19 points for Buffalo. Ooh, the Rangers, after winning the Stanley Cup, they only have 16 points. Holy. The Hurricanes have 43, so they're on another level right now. Uh, and they beat us in game number one. So there you go. They are 21 and 3 which is ridiculous. But as for our scoring, let's have a look here. I have a quick little recap. We'll end off this video. I am interested to see your guys' comments about two things, the Bowen Byram thing and the next franchise mode thing. I'm looking forward to hearing your guys' comments about those, but looks like the scoring is kind of more well-balanced right now. Uh, Conrad and Matthew Barzell obviously leading the way. Lucas Raymond, 26. Mahalik and Spike Helm, hello. Okay, 12 goals, 10 health. 
helpers, things you love to see. Third liner, uh, Nick Suzuki with 21, Nasty Nods with 18, Kale McCarr with 18, Quinn Wrights with 14, Neil Pionk with 13. That's awesome. Where's Kaliev? There he is. Listed as a third liner. So a part of me wants to go out and get a legitimate second line winger, but we know that once we get going, Arthur Kaliev is going to get into his groove, but only four goals in 26 games. That's a little bit concerning. I just know how good he can be, but I mean, there's times like this year, throughout the first 26 games, he's kind of invisible. Guys on the fourth line have as many goals as Arthur Kaliev has. We're paying him to score goals, so I mean, maybe move Spike Helm up and move Kaliev down? What do you guys think about that? Jake Furtanen, Hoivinen, Nidamaki, the Rolo man, Havis Lindholm, and the Oreo man. There you go. Rolos, he's got three goals and three helpers. As for the tendies, to close this one off, Tristan Jari, 8-1. Oh god, not another goaltending controversy. No, I can't see Tristan Jari taking over the starting minutes, but it is good to see 8-1. Askarov's kind of struggled, unfortunately. Speaking about struggling here, oh man, things you hate to see. 9-11. and 11. Uh, Let's have a look at the NHL scoring, just for fun. The Hurricanes are killing it right now. Quinn Bossy leading the way. As for rookie skaters, 15 points for Lassie Sallow. We've got Waters and Kidney. There you go. And then there's the first overall pick. There he is, Jim Martin. Made the NHL, obviously, 83 overall. Pretty damn good. And then who is leading the league? Bo Alfredson. I could have told you that. But Burt Bondra, a defenseman. There you go. Alexander Wenberg. Hello. All right. There you are. Jeremy Bracco. Okay. Some guys you guys you didn't really expect to see here. 35 points for Max Lafleur and Seidenberg. Yager, Stastny. So Stastny's right up there. 41 points for Alfredson in 25 games. Like, how is he so good? I didn't even make him that good. It's ridiculous. I mean, Spike Helm has really been playing unbelievable. Should we reward him and bring him up? It does ruin the chemistry, but maybe it's something we can talk about in the comments. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one. What would you do with this team? Let me know. I think we should just ride it out, though. I mean, if things continue to be just average, maybe shake it up with a trade. But I'm feeling confident the boys are going to rebound here. We won like nine straight earlier. I'm feeling confident. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.